Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 1, Episode 7 of Gotham Knights. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, I'm going to talk about some interesting Gotham lore we got. I mean, just lore just about uh, this universe in general uh, that we got. I just want to talk about it at the beginning just so I remember, because if I don't talk about it, I'm afraid I'm going to forget about it. But some interesting things we found out is that in this continuity, Cobblepot, uh, um, Penguin, was mayor, which I thought was kind of interesting. I wonder what the fallout of that whole circumstances were. I mean, it's not too surprising. I mean, obviously, we, I, I wonder if that been something that's happened periodically throughout the comics, him becoming mayor or something, or maybe that's from one particular storyline. I mean, I mean, it's not too surprising. I mean, Lex Luthor becoming president, you know, is a thing in the comics, so why would Oswald being uh, mayor kind of be interesting? But I think that's fascinating to know that. Because if I remember correctly, in the show Gotham, he became mayor. I mean, it's been a while, but I want to say in Gotham he was mayor. Uh, either way, so that was kind of interesting. We found out about, like, we got introduced to was Sophia Green. She's a detective that took down Magpie, which is interesting because uh, Magpie was also in Batwoman. But they also uh, bring up the fact that apparently she's the one that made Catwoman, you know, uh, put up her, her, like, thieving ways, which I'm like... Is that actually true? Because the public doesn't know about Batman and Catwoman's thing. I mean, who knows what their relationship was like in this continuity? But I'm, part of me is like, if that's the case, could that be... Makes you wonder, where is Catwoman in this continuity? Cause I'm, I'm curious, like, because Sophia might think she was the reason why, or maybe rumor says she's the reason why Catwoman gave up her thieving ways. But as we know, her and Bruce have their relationship. So, might have been the other way around. I, who knows? I, I don't know does make you wonder what how she feels now that Bruce is going. If she's still alive for all, we, we, we don't know. I mean, they like maybe they just went their separate way years ago, but it's still, I'm sure, I'm sure they still had their fling that, that uh, you know, I mean, I know in the comics they've had a kid together. I don't know if, you know, if that ends up being something that happened in the storyline or not. I don't think we're going to find out. I was thinking to myself, like, not unless we find out, like, Turner's. No, I was about to say not unless he was about to, we find out he's, like, Catwoman's, like, uh, and Bruce's son or something like that, but it's like, no, because it's like, why not even, if that was the case, why not, well, I, I'm, I'm running through so many tangents in my head, that's why I keep stopping, but regardless, it doesn't matter, I, there's definitely going to be something to Turner's birth about who his biological parents were, and their connection, and, and why they were murdered, and stuff like that, but we'll, we'll kind of tackle that when we kind of learn a little bit more, but I was just, I thought that was just interesting. To know that she apparently kind of gave uh, gave up her thieving ways because of Sophia, but I just I feel like maybe Bruce had a part to play in it, but we don't know. Once again, we don't know what their story was in this continuity. Either way, so starting off, uh, I love the fact is that obviously the Gotham Knights continue to get praise, and it's just it makes Duella sick to her stomach, especially because it's like they keep replaying it over and over again. The millions that we gave out to the city, it's like it disgusts me. It's like you know, and Turner's like, well, we didn't walk away empty-handed. She's like, speak for yourself. Uh, so they're trying to figure out. They still haven't fully cracked the ledger situation. And they're still trying to, if I remember correctly, maybe they did and I'm not remembering correctly. Either way, they're also tackling the talent situation of like, cool, uh, what happened to Lincoln? So it's like the talent's definitely still alive. He hasn't aged. And he's also... Uh, able to survive a whole bat cave being dropped on him. So how do we? How did he end up this way? So Duella went through the only source that she knew. That was Eunice. So obviously she made Carrie complicit in the kidnapping and stuff like that. Um, I think I, I also love how psychotic she is because she made like Duella made like a talent pun because it's like oh your dad so talented or something she said something like that and started laughing maniacally you could just see like carrie kind of rolling her eyes i love that you made him fun it was and like you're kind of laughing maniacally afterwards but yeah uh, the difference between i i do love the pairing of like yeah duella's like i'm willing to kind of skirt some lines to get what we need so i'm gonna turn off this old woman's oxygen tank unless she gives us the information we want carrie's trying to kill her with kindness duella's literally just trying to kill her um but yeah, like, Carrie thinks her approach is working, which it is. Like, she gets a little loose lips, but it's just because, like, I mean, I think Eunice isn't all, I mean, well, not 
I think. She's obviously not all there mentally, but it's also like a ploy because she wanted to get Carrie out of the room so that she could end up stabbing and trying. She stabbed uh, Duella in the hand with um, the piece of the music box with the ballerina. Like, I did not realize how long that piece was until Duella put it out. I was like, oh, that's, that's, I was like, oh, it seemed like it was super short. It's like, nope, that was super long when she pulled it out of her hand. I was like, Jesus. Um, and then she proceeded to try and choke her with the, uh, with the, um, the tubes from her oxygen tank. I was like, Jesus, that's brutal. And she was laughing. She wanted to kill Duella because it's like, yeah, like my dad told me about the girl with the blue eyes that got away. It's like, yo, that's wild. It's like, uh, you know, um. Uh, a reminder to everyone out there, you can't trust old people. It's kind of what that's, that says. But, um... Because units had opened up about the fact is of... They, the talent, I mean, the uh, Court of Owls took an interest in her father because of his work. And so before he was executed, they gave him something that would make him survive it. And whatever it was, it was the last of what they have. So that's why I'm like, it can't be Lazarus Pit then. It's got to be something else entirely then. Because I mean, like, this was like, what, what was this, the 30s or something? Even older? So I'm like, why would they be able to, no, it was like the 20s, right? When um, he was initially about to be executed so it's like because yeah because he's like 130 years old right so why would the Lazarus Pit situation be dried up that far back not unless it's something where they managed to get access to it but but that because that's like oh like someone living for a long time the only thing I can think of is the Lazarus Pit like for one Batman related wise um, but maybe it's something else entirely, but it's like, the fact is that, did they only get a sample of it? Maybe the court only had, like, over the years, maybe they only got a couple, a little bit here and there, and it seems like maybe that has to do with some part of their plan, because they gave him the last of it, so maybe ever since then, they've been looking for more. Uh, maybe there's a Lazarus, well, I mean, there's a Lazarus pit pool in Gotham, in Titan, so maybe there's one here. If it ends up, in fact, being the Lazarus Pit. Once again, it could be something else entirely, so. So, all the while that's happening, obviously, there's also these, um, art heists that have been going on. I think it's so interesting that Cullen took such an interest in it, because for him, it's like, oh, like, this wonderful art is going to be taken away, and no one can, I think Cullen is someone who does appreciate art, and it's just kind of like, yeah, it's kind of messed up that no one gets to appreciate it. You know, obviously, uh, Harper has less interest in helping out in that regard because it's like, right, we're just going to help rich people. And it's like, I have no interest in that. So, I mean, once again, like have her having the perspective where she kind of hates all rich people and she kind of looks at um, Stephanie the same way. It's understandable when you look at like the large gap between the rich and the poor, specifically in Gotham like that, that, that. This, that that is such a massive gap that it's like yeah like you, you, of course you'd grow up in a, a, situ, a city like that with the system the systematic system that it is the systematic system Jesus the systematic like thing of how Gotham keeps the rich rich and the poor poor so it's understandable right so but looking into it further which I love that because uh, they were trying to figure out okay if Stephanie ended up uh, finding a connection between all the paintings that were stolen. They all belonged to Alan Wayne. So you're like, okay, so what's that about? Interesting. That can't be coincidence that every art piece that was stolen is connected. There were pieces that he had before he died. And they passed through so many different hands, but they all go back to Alan. So this has to be a court thing. So... Harper ended up going to Dylan trying to find out what he heard in the criminal circle, which I love catching up with him being like, yeah, I'm in therapy now. I recognize me trying to uh, turn you in for the reward money was me just trying to uh, punish you for how things kind of played out between us. It is also sad because she's like apologetic, which I think there is some truth to it, but she still kind of did the whole like, I'm sorry, and I'm batting my eyes and manipulating you thing. And so he's like, yeah, sure, whatever the favor is you need. You know, because he's like, yeah, I just want you to be happy. She's like, I want you to happy be too. I want you to be happy too. I mean, just not like with me or whatever. It's like, yeah, like you know. He's like, yeah, I, I get it. 
You know, but it's like, yeah, so I could definitely see her using that to her advantage even further in the future. If like, yeah, she's kind of got Dylan wrapped around her finger, so I think he's someone that she could go to for whatever she needs potentially in the future. We'll see. I'm sure his mom will probably put a super kibosh on that. Once again, especially after all the money that was stolen by them, and I'm sure his mom is not going to be too happy about it, but Dylan's going to be torn between like, yeah, I care about Harper and what my mom wants, and that's going to be interesting. I, I could definitely see that being a developing situation but um their plan is to go after this new thief which is interesting i kind of wondered from the beginning like the fact is that it's like oh yeah we have this cop show up who's investigating all of these uh burglaries but this person's also like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of gotham's like big time burglars so i'm like I'm curious to see. I was wondering if there was more to it. Turns out it is. The person behind all of this is Sophia, but she's only behind all of this because her family was kidnapped and the court is forcing her to do this. I mean, it makes sense. You were able to catch some of the greatest thieves in Gotham. Of course, you're going to pick up a thing or two from them because you had to understand how they did what they did. And then also, you know, especially because she was able to quickly pick up this uh, thief's uh, methodology, especially because one of the cops was like, yeah, but because the thief literally keeps changing their style every time they're breaking into one of these places. And it, it makes it harder to catch, create a pattern when you're able to do that but it also makes sense because you're probably applying different things from different thieves. I wonder in the one we got to see at the beginning of the episode, that might have been her pulling a little bit of a cat woman. That might be what that's applicable to, especially with like the rope and everything and, you know, like the way she was like very tactical and how she took everyone down. I, and it makes sense. It's like, yeah, take out the guards now so that they're not shooting at you while you're trying to make your escape because it won't be a fully quick enough escape that you'll be able to dodge bullets. So that is pr pretty interesting. You grab the painting, you wait for everyone to show up, and then you take them down, and then you leave. So I thought it was uh, pretty badass when, like, Turner ended up throwing, like, the, uh, the battering, and it ended up, like, hitting the gun. She accidentally fired or shot herself in the lane. I was like, geez, that was an interesting turn of events. But, yeah, um, Sophia being just another victim of the Court of Owls. So it's like, cool. All right, let's go in there. We have to get the painting. If we can get to the painting first, we can figure out what the court's all about, what they're planning with all these paintings. Granted, they have 60 seconds to go in and get it, blow open the door, dash in there. Guards kind of arrived a little early. It's like 60 seconds was like an estimate. Luckily, Turner and Colin were able to get out of there. Colin couldn't really appreciate the art the way he wanted it to. But uh, they managed to get away, but nothing from the painting seemed like worth it. It's like, I mean, obviously, they're like, it doesn't seem like it's hiding anything, but I guess it was like, we find out at the end that the last painting in particular is the one that had the hidden thing. I guess you had to like, because they couldn't, because I guess they never went below the paint because they probably figured like maybe it needs to stay as much intact as possible. They ended up giving it to the court in exchange for uh, Detective Green's family but the court was going to kill everyone um i mean it's not like knowing that it was turner they were talking to that would have made a difference especially because turner already like made his stance clear that he would never join with the court so even if he had revealed himself they still would have been like well yeah we tried to kill you before so we'll go we're going right back to killing you so but it's like no we have eunice as a hostage and the talent's not going to act too happy when you uh let his daughter die you know the guy you got beheading people yeah he's gonna start swinging towards your heads you know you got him on a leash for now but because Eunice had talked about the fact is that as long as like she was taken care of that's why her dad like so much so evilly so loyally serves the court so it's like yeah it was in your best interest to kind of keep him happy especially if he's kind of an un killable serial killer last thing you want is that kind of that rabid animal kind of turned against you and the gotham knights uh reputation ends up getting better and better because of this it makes which i love that line where it's just like uh do i let's discuss it because it's like now it makes it even worse being talked about in such a congratul congratulatory hero way um especially from a cop and i just love trying to be like well, you doing a good deed doesn't make you a good person. She turns to him, she's like, thanks. It, that really meant a lot to her. Uh, but I also love that, what it kind of meant for Duella and Carrie, where it's just like, yeah, um, 
I tried to handle the whole like kill him with kindness situation that left you alone for her to try and kill you and you handling and kidnapping Eunice and kind of handling things your very villainous way actually led to a situation where Detective Green's family was actually be able to be rescued. So it all kind of worked out. And so kind of the complications as um, Duella kind of puts it like potato, tomato or, or potato, tomato. And it's like, I don't get what that means. It's like, just like Gotham, things are complicated, you know? So it's like, the fact is that you're willing to give me such a morbid gift, like giving her the um, the piece to the uh, music box that you stabbed her with as a keepsake. It's like, yeah, it kind of shows that you're learning, kind of rubbing off on each other. Uh, she's getting a little bit of heroism, but no, despite how it makes her sick, but Carrie's recognizing that, yes, even your villainous ways have their has uh, their benefits, essentially. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, Gotham is a very, very complicated city when it comes to the heroism and the, the villainism of it all, so. But ultimately, the final piece to the, the, the that piece of the music box ended up unlocking um, some hidden photos. Granted, everyone's in a mask. I don't know how much, how helpful those photos are going to be, but maybe it'll give them some clue or something. But I mean, I was like, are we going to see someone without a mask on? I was like, no, they're all masked up, so they, they are, they're careful about it. But I don't know how much those photos are really going to be able to... I, I'm, I'm curious to see how that could lead to any answers for our protagonist. But we'll have to wait and see. I also like that this episode also brought Stephanie and um, Harper a little closer. Because, you know, Colin was already trying to get Harper to look at Stephanie in a different light. And it's like, oh, here's... Um, Stephanie helping with Harper's wound and it's like well yeah you protected me from gunfire like uh last episode so I'm just trying to return the favor this episode in this regard so along with all of that we have the situation with Lincoln turns out hey he's not dead he's just uh he went in in for surgery it was it went well but then it went bad and now he's in a coma and now it puts puts Harvey in this very interesting spot, especially because he's hanging around Rebecca this episode, and even she's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of messed up, but when I heard about something going down at your office, all I could think about is like, man, I hope nothing happened to Harvey. It's like, <laughs> yikes. But it's like, yeah, because especially because she thinks Lincoln is having affairs, and she also knows, like, she thinks, like, Lincoln didn't marry me out of love, it was simply because he needed someone to play the do uh, do uh, dutiful, dutiful and wife uh, role and stuff like that, so that's why she's like, that's all he really cared about, because, it's the March family, March family's one of, like, the rich families in the, um, Gotham. I don't know if they're one of the, like the founding families or not. Because I was, I was trying to wonder, like, does Rebecca come from money and Lincoln doesn't? Because if, if if that is the case, that would kind of make sense even more so. But maybe I'm reading too much in that. Maybe they both are from prominent families. But it is interesting too that the person, because like the fact is, I thought it was a little suspicious that Rebecca stayed behind. She sent uh, Brody. Uh, to his grandparents, but she was like last minute packing. Someone kept calling, and, and she was worried, like, "Oh, I'm scared. Like, what if I'm being watched and stuff?" I found that a little suspicious, but once again, maybe I could be reading too much into it. But she ended up find they ended up finding out the person that was calling and hanging up was potentially one of it's one of the people Rebecca suspects of sleeping with Lincoln. So you're like, huh, interesting. So it's like, well, the mistress can't really call the hospital to find out. So. Like, cause news is obviously spread about Lincoln, so why keep calling if you know that she keeps picking up? That doesn't make any sense. That's why I'm like, there's got to be more to that. Because I was actually scared that the moment Harvey answered the phone, it was going to be one of those, like, oh, like, put him in a trance type of situation again. So... Then you have Harvey and Rebecca, you know, doing their thing, despite... The complicated situation they're in because it's like, hey, having an affair with a married woman, regardless of, hey, if Lincoln died, which even they were like, that conversation came up. You know, it's like they could, you know, be together if something did happen to him. But even if it did, it would complicate. Even if she was a widower, even if she got divorced, it'd still be kind of a nasty situation, especially with Harvey trying to become mayor. Once again, I 
feel like the court is pushing him towards being mayor. They need him alive because he's an easy pawn because they have to be controlling him. And maybe, once again, maybe they're just using his... Maybe he secretly has the same condition as his dad and they've just learned how to trigger it um, in a way. Maybe that ex explains it because we're still not clear on the full... But that's all about, and the fact is, once again, he's, like, shocked up with Rebecca, so that might be on purpose, too. Once again, I don't know if that's his deepest desire of, like, oh, I'm going after what I want, which is Rebecca, or whether the court is behind that. Or, once again, maybe there's some mysterious third party involved in that that we're just not aware of. Things get even more complicated when the fact is that Lincoln's not dead. Hey, I'm awake from my coma, so... What does that mean for them? It seemed like Harvey was going to tell her something, but he stopped. I don't know whether he was going to bring up like, yeah, I'm blacking out and I'm losing time. I don't know if he's going to open up about that or whether he was going to tell her like, yes, I do want to, I, I, I do, I do. Because they did go to the conversation point of what he wants is her, but before they could really go any further, they, they got the Lincoln news, so... What was also an interesting development is that at the end of the episode, Harvey gets visited by Cressida, who the court is, I guess, after her because of her failures and everything with um, Turner, that she's saying, like, hey, I know what the court is planning. I just need your protection. It's like, that is interesting. Like, it is the thing of, like, you've been a loyal servant to the uh, court. You know, once again, we don't know her circumstances. We don't know if it's a thing of... Well, she doesn't wear the mask, so I don't think it's a situation she was born into. It has to be a like just like anyone. Well, she might have. I don't. I don't remember her talking about it with Turner. Her connection to the court. Maybe she did talk about it. I just don't remember now. But I, it has to be like a you're forced to work with them. You seem kind of super willing. The way you were kind of going after Mayor Hill, kind of threatening him. It seemed like you felt like you had a comfortable position with the court. But I mean, like everyone's unless you're part of the court, you're just a means to an end. Like everyone's a means to an end of getting what they want. So, but it's like what they fully have planned is unclear. But we find out the thing they were looking for is it seems like to be maybe an old map of Gotham. It's like it was beneath one of the paintings. Maybe, maybe it's not even like necessarily, maybe it's like a, on the more magical side of things, maybe it's like some ley lines that run throughout Gotham. Once again, maybe it has something to do with the Talon's immortality and the court's trying to do the same thing. They've been aiming for it for the entire time. Because something I brought up previously is... Obviously, the, the Waynes are a founding family, so they have to have some connection to the court. So my thing is, the fact is, Alan Wayne had this painting makes me think, was he a part of the court and did he turn against him because he didn't agree with what they had planned? What that is exactly, we'll ultimately have to find out. But once again, like, what other reasons would there be for a map, maybe like a very old map of Gotham, like, what would that reveal that the court would use to take, and how would they take advantage of it? There's also a little side note thing I thought was kind of interesting, too, and I don't know if I'm reading too much into it. They did reference, I, I don't, I guess this is the museum uh, that they got the uh, final painting out of, but didn't they say that that's the Kane Museum, which leads to a lot of interesting things? Because, you know, I don't know much about the Kane family, because even... To my recollection, they got brought up a little bit in Pennyworth, but they never really went fully too deep into Martha's family. But someone had told me, like, in some of the comics they've covered, uh, this was, like, years ago, like, when Batwoman was first, like, announced. Like, I think the trailers had come out, the first trailer had come out for it. But my understanding, someone had explained, like, in some aspects of the comics, the Waynes and the Canes have, there's blood beef there. So, there's a blood feud uh, there, so... I'm just curious what those circumstances mean in this continuity. I mean, was there, is there not a Kate Kane? Maybe there is, and she just never became Batwoman in this continuity. Um, stuff like that. Just, you know, and once again, it's called the Kane Museum. Maybe I'm just reading too much, but it's like, that's too purposeful of a name to in this, in this world. So it's just like, there has to be a connection there. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. Just kind of a little extra thing I, I just remembered at the last second I kind of wanted to include, so... 
like I said, that could easily just be me overthinking it. And once again, it's just interesting, the little seeds they plant here and there about kind of expanding what the Batman lore is in this universe. I'm always fascinated to see what, what exists already and what doesn't, you know? So, but really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.